Welcome again to 10 with Ken. I'm Ken Steele. This week we're going to try something a little different. We're on location at the University of Waterloo, and we're going to try to find out just how Canada's most innovative university got that way. Let's take 10 and take a look. For 25 years running, Maclean's magazine has ranked the University of Waterloo as the most innovative university in Canada. And in a lot of ways, it started out that way. The founders envisioned a school of applied science with a co-op education program that integrated work experience with classroom training. Many traditional academics had reservations about the so-called Waterloo model, but now institutions worldwide want to emulate it. Waterloo has spun off technology companies like OpenText, BlackBerry, Desire to Learn, and more. In fact, more than 200 companies got their start with University of Waterloo Technologies. Campus leaders want to know how do we inspire a sense of entrepreneurship and risk-taking in a conservative academic environment. Let's go straight to the source and find out. I recently sat down with Dr. Feridun Hamdelopper, the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Waterloo for the past six years. He can't take credit for 60 years of accomplishments at the university, of course, but perhaps he can shed some light on how the university's culture works. The University of Waterloo has been ranked consistently as the number one most innovative university in Canada for 25 years in a row, almost half of its history. And the only reason it's not more is that no one was asking the question That's before right. that. <laughs> You've probably answered this question hundreds of times, but what do you think has contributed to making this place Canada's most innovative university? makes me think every time I'm asked this question, it's a good question, uh, my thought immediately goes to, the, to our origin. Because we were created this way. Our creation, the, the reason why University of Waterloo came to a being is exactly because of that innovative thought. We wanted to do things differently. We wanted to offer an unconventional type of you know, education and wrap this around all kinds of other things that itself was the start of a very innovative culture that made this university what it is today. In a lot of ways, the University of Waterloo came to be because of a group of industrialists who saw Absolutely. the need. It wasn't academics, it wasn't politicians. Is that part of what's given the place such a pragmatic orientation? With that kind of beginning, you start attracting the kind of students, kind of right. faculty that are really, really um, um, aligned with, with our culture. When you combine your immense human power and with the culture of the institution, that's your innovative you know, explosion. And this is what makes this place so innovative, not just for one moment, not just for one year, but in a continuous manner. So it's 60 years of building momentum in this yeah, direction. Absolutely. I always say that what is, again, so unique or different about the University of Waterloo is how we connect to the world, how we connect to our communities. Cooperative education is one form of that connect connectivity, and together with that is relevance. Everybody simplifies, oversimplifies cooperative education as, hey, our graduates will have jobs after they graduate, which is not a bad thing at all. It's fantastic, but it's only a very small fraction of it. Co-op makes us connected to the world. It helps us understand the world better. And to be able to see a little farther, to be able to understand things a little deeper than the rest is a huge for us a distinction. We initiate change, we start this change, we lead that change, and everything else comes after that. My sense is that co-op leads nicely into Velocity for a lot of students. How does Velocity fit into the research, entrepreneurship, innovation ecosystem at the University of Waterloo? Broadway? Velocity is enormously important. If you have this, this, this really innovative environment that really understands the value of integrated learning to be able to understand our relevance of what we do here. And in there, something starts boiling up. And that is what we call entrepreneurship. This is in addition to our 
great researchers doing fantastic research and that nat is a natural outcome of that commercializing that. This is different. This is starting at a very early fundamental level with our students because they are combining now. They're teaching and learning at the university with how it is related to the world outside. They're combining it with their national or international experience. And most importantly, they feel themselves confident enough. They have that confidence in them that they have acquired while they were students here. That they can take risks. It's okay. This is what's happening. And Velocity is a fantastic outlet of this approach this philosophy, this notion. So Velocity itself is unbelievably innovative here that we started this. Let's bring these like-minded students together. Let's provide them with an environment that they can really unleash their, you know, talent, wisdom, vision, everything. And let's put, bring some people around them that could give them the kind of experience and the depth that they may not have as undergraduate students. So that is the whole thing. Velocity is so important to us. It is now part of our DNA. Are there things about the Velocity Incubator that distinguish it from other university incubators? You, you, you know it quite well. You could hardly find any university now, not just in Canada, but around the world, that will not talk about entrepreneurship uh, or innovation. There, there are a lot of incubators. Yeah, there are a lot of, and I applaud them. That's fantastic. But the difference here is how the student-based entrepreneurship is connected to everything else we do here. Mm -hmm. We are a research-intensive university. Um, absolutely, I could not think of the University of Waterloo being just a you know, teaching institution. Our research, however, is very much connected to what we teach. It's very much connected to what we learn. So entrepreneurship, cooperative education, and we call it transformative research, they are all you know, embedded within each other. So that is the connection. The difference here at the University of Waterloo, entrepreneurship is a very natural, organic outcome of what they do here. Close to 50%, the last time I looked at it was about 47% of our incoming undergraduate class. They come here with an anticipation and excitement of becoming an entrepreneur. That is a huge number. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's also the world's largest free incubator. And the University of Waterloo takes the same approach to researcher-owned IP. Is that unique? Our, we're not the only institution. There are um, uh, a few others. We are unique because as to how we are really, truly committed to that. We have faculty members who have choices be in Waterloo or Stanford or other institutions, they choose to come to Waterloo simply because of this policy. Right. If you commercialize, if you take this, your IP, and do some great things about it, we are all going to benefit. Not just my university, our entire country, everybody is going to benefit from that. And that is, to me, more important than a very narrow perspective of how I can financially benefit from, you know, this, this IP. It creates the kind of culture that I love. And imagine what we have been able to do in our first 60 years and how this is going to exponentially grow because we respect and cherish this, this culture. In the long run, I truly believe that it's going to be a lot more beneficial. I'm often asked to facilitate workshops at conferences or on campuses. Uh, in which campus leaders want to explore how to bring a culture of innovation and entrepreneurial mindset to their institutions. In, in a sense, they'd like to be more like the University of Waterloo. What advice would you offer to a college or university president who, who would like to inspire that kind of entrepreneurial mindset on their campus? Again, every institution has its own unique footprint, has its own unique distinction. The last thing I want to do is to advise my colleagues how you should be doing this way, things this way and that way. But what I can tell you, if you're really committed to, and you must, to innovation, we cannot bring innovation incrementally. We need to believe that innovation has to be with us every single moment of our existence. 
as a university. Just saying that, look, I am going to include entrepreneurship as part of my overall operation is good, but it's not enough because these things have to come in in such an organic way that will constitute the kind of environment, a new, innovative, higher education environment that we need to provide not only to our students, but to all our constituents, whether it's the governments, whether it's the uh, private sector industry, they all have to understand that things are done differently than we did before. That doesn't mean that what we did before wasn't right. Today, it's just not applicable anymore. I know, I know quite well with no doubt whatsoever in my mind that if we are, if we are to exist as an institution of higher learning, not today, but 10, 15, 20 years from today, we must believe in innovation, without which we will become insignificant. I'm often asked whether it's possible for an established university or college that's been in existence for 50 or 100 years to, to suddenly change gears and become innovative, to, to create innovative new programming, uh, to deliver it in a new way. All the examples I can think of, of institutions that are distinct and innovative in this country, Royal Rhodes University or the University of Waterloo in the United States, there's edX. These are institutions that were founded on an innovative basis. They, they started out coming from a different angle uh, and have been innovative as a result. Is it possible, do you think, for an established university to become innovative or does it have to be born innovative? To me, it's an advantage if you have it right from the beginning like our institution, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible to, to really shift your culture and bring innovation as a main part of your existence, what, what you do. So there are institutions, for example, who truly understand that to, be, to bring that innovative culture and bring entrepreneurship as part of that innovative culture, you have to be better connected with the world. That is absolutely a must. So we cannot sit in our classrooms, we cannot sit in our offices and expect that whatever we drink or eat is going to make us entrepreneurial, what is going to make us think innovatively. It is how we interact with the rest of the world. And for us, again, Cooperative education is an unbelievably huge asset in doing so. So if an institution would like to add more depth into their innovative existence, bring more entrepreneurship either through their students or faculty, they have to make efforts to be much better connected to the world, whether it's through international efforts, whether it's industrial relations and understanding uh, uh, the challenges and needs. So I think it requires, again, a big shift as to how we practice teaching and learning at our institutions and how we combine a really deep learning, curiosity-based learning, and how we bring research and uh, scholarship into that picture. So they have to all happen at the same time, and this is what, uh, I'm, I'm, again, I come back to the University of Waterloo, that our existence is on three pillars, cooperative education, transformative research, and entrepreneurship, and we are going to continue building on those three pillars to be at the front edge of innovation all the time. I'm very proud of our quarter of a century of innovative uh, nature or being recognized as the most innovative university. It only makes me more determined to be the most innovative university the following year. It only makes me more determined to be one of the top innovative universities in the world. And it doesn't stop. It is one thing after another. The moment you've reached a target, a milestone, there's another one waiting for you. So that is quite congruent with the nature of innovation, and this is what we are doing here. So between last week's episode on Velocity and this week's interview with President Hamdalipur, I think we've gathered some genuine insight into how the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship works at the University of Waterloo. 
Innovation is embedded in the DNA of the institution, from its roots as an engineering school to its many IT success stories. Waterloo was born innovative. There's a tight synergy between research, co-op, and entrepreneurship programs like Velocity. There's been 60 years of momentum, attracting entrepreneurial faculty, staff, and students, thanks in part to a creator-owned IP policy. Perhaps most importantly, we've also learned that a culture of innovation doesn't result from a retreat into the library or the lab, but from actively seeking greater connections with the wider world through internationalization, applied research, industry connections, and of course, co-op. My sincere thanks to President Hamdeleper for taking the time to sit down with me. Hopefully in the process of editing the interview, we didn't lose too much of the nuance in his answers, and hopefully you found it as enlightening as I did. This is the first interview episode of 10 with Ken, and they probably lend themselves more to audio podcasts than to short videos. At this point, it's an experiment, and we'd really appreciate hearing your thoughts. Was it worth the extra effort to go on site like this? Should we do future interviews by phone or Skype instead? Are there other people you'd really like me to interview about innovation in higher education? Please leave a comment below or drop me an email at ken at edgevation.ca. Next time, we're going to take our annual look back at new higher ed brands and marketing campaigns. To be sure you don't miss it, take a moment now to join more than 13,000 10 with Ken subscribers and followers on any of a dozen platforms. You'll find links to all of these channels and an email subscription form on our website at 10withken.com. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. 10 with Ken is a production of Eduvation Inc. Copyright 2017. I'm available for conference keynotes, campus PD events, board retreats, and committee workshops in person or now virtually too. For more information, please visit www.eduvation.guru or 10withken.com.